first of all, how to identify the information architecture. How to, where is the information architecture? Uh, I believe that there are three parts to it, and if you understand these parts, you can identify it in whatever you're talking about, and you can make whatever you're talking about uh, suck less, or maybe even be good, if you can work with these three things. Uh, these are words that might be uncomfortable to say, so you don't have to say them this way, ever, if you don't want to. If you think you're going to be uh, thought to be obtuse by talking about ontology. But what we're talking about is uh, when these things come together with the particular meaning, so starting with your elevator pitches, and we'll get even more particular, uh, what we mean and the particulars of what we mean, uh, that's ontology. Taxonomy then is the arrangement, so once we get particular, taxonomy is arranging those, particul those particles. And then choreography, the interplay of these two wheels, means that there are some rules for how the parts interrelate. And if you want to address the information architecture of a thing, whether it is uh, a print menu at uh, the International House of Pancakes, which is what an information architect friend of mine uh, has worked on, or if you are, uh, whatever you do, uh, if there's complex information, if you would like to get at the architecture part, I believe it's in these three things. So uh, ontology, the particular meaning. I stole this from the Twitter stream of my colleague Andrew Hinton. Uh, cheap, but you know, but not, you know, it's not cheap, it's cheap. The particular meaning, so if we're building a web-based product or service around this bookstore and this merchandising approach, our particular meaning of cheap can have a huge impact on what we would do with the architecture and the design of this then, right? Cheap, but not cheap. And if you close your eyes and you hear me say cheap, but not cheap, how's that gonna work? Uh, this is a client of ours in West Michigan, a big healthcare system. Location, what do we mean, what is the particular meaning for these people about location? They have a hospital with clinics inside of it. Uh, and there are uh, centers inside of buildings. There are places and locations and centers and clinics. Some of them have geo coordinates. Some of them are inside of buildings. Some of them are buildings. What are our particular meaning about these things? If we want to build a information system that lets people who are coming here find things, and one part of our world has locations as buildings, and another part has locations as meta constructs that have building-like things inside of them, this can be bad. Uh, Pantone. Has anybody here worked with graphic design? Pantone. So they're owned by a company in Grand Rapids called x -Rite. You pay them to give you a particular meaning of what orange means. This orange is 1505C. And you can reliably, the ontology of orange has been controlled by this product that you pay a lot of money for. Because it's valuable to have it be the same orange. If you've ever had lanyards and badges not match, as I have, uh, this could have fixed that. Um, does anybody know what this is? Capybara. This is a fish. According to the Catholic Church, this has been reclassified oh, as a fish <laughs> to allow people, no, no, it's, no, no, it's no, actually I know, important. I know the truth. See, there are people Friday. in parts of the world where if they couldn't eat these on Fridays, mm -hmm. it would be like dangerous to their health of their community. So changing the ontology of what this means, our particular meaning of this for Catholics is an act of grace, of graciousness, of humanity. So our particular meaning is really important and one company that sucks at this is Apple. What do we mean by no? Oh, do you, how many app stores do you have? On your on iTunes, there is a place called App Store. Yeah. In the Mac OS, there is a thing called an App Store. The things you buy in this one are not the things that you buy in this one. The things you buy in this one only work on iOS devices. The things you buy in this one only work on Mac OS devices. They both have the same name. They're both on your computer. Uh, iTunes. On your computer, it's a proprietary software application that plays music. On your iPhone, it is a place where they sell you things. iPhone is, or iTunes on your handheld phone 
doesn't play music, except as a teaser to get you to buy music that you then play with a different application. But here, the same application is where you buy and you They stink at this. Because all they do is design. They don't know about architecture. So our particular meaning, once we lock into those particular meanings, uh, because of reasons, then there's certain stuff that we can do and certain stuff that we, other stuff that we can't do. Uh, so when it comes, we've got our particular meaning. And now when we're arranging these parts in instances, uh, this is more of what you might expect from information architecture. Is a system, a diagram that has, like in biology class, for all the different families and kingdoms and phyla, uh, yes, that is a taxonomy. It's taking up, but there's already a sense of what the parts are. Somebody has already architected the world into families and kingdoms and phylums and such like. And then you use that system in taxonomies to get stuff done. You're organizing meaning in a context to get stuff done. Uh, Zingerman's is smart about taxonomy on their website. Uh, they have a category called sweet stuff. And they have a, a subcategory called baked goods. And as somebody who tries to avoid gluten, uh, I would avoid this, even though I know there are wonderful things in there. Uh, oh no, wait, here's how it goes. Under bread, sweet specialty bread, I'm not going there. But sweet stuff and baked goods, I might go there. There's something about, and both of these take you to the same page. So if I, if my particular sense of it is, if it's sweet stuff, I might go there. But if it's, if it's uh, bread, well I don't do bread, but I do some baked goods. Uh, they are arranging this meaning in two different contexts, and it takes you to the same place. And they're doing that on purpose, uh, his response. Um, here's somebody who was really not smart. It surprised me. Uh, this is something I actually wanted to buy. Target stores had a deal with uh, Campbell's to have special Andy Warhol uh, soup labels on Campbell's soup. Read about it on the iPad in the New York Times. Great. Warhol soup cans. Uh, Warhol soup cans target web search. There's even a Warhol soup can target.com. Oh, great. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh -huh. So uh, they are spoofing a, a, that they understand either the ontology or the taxonomy of what we're talking about here with these soup cans. They just have some crappy ad that looks for their name and then whatever was searched for and then there you go. But their website didn't know how to find these products. And so when we're arranging meaning within a context, that's something that's more controllable. And our librarian skills uh, alone might help us with that. But when we start talking about how we live now with products and services distributed across all these different channels, we're arranging meaning across contexts. And that is hard. Um, and the combination of those things then results in sort of uh, choreography. There are, there are ways that these products and services can move. Once these things are underway, whether they're planned or not, these wheels are moving everywhere there's an information system. And then there are some rules as a result of these things. And as a designer, so if you are a designer and uh, it's your first day at Apple, um, and you have your Captain Obvious, you're like, hey, on my Mac, I can click on this books thing all day long, and it will never open. So can I fix that? Can we add that to the next sprint? I can open it on the iPad. No. You can't. The, the, the choreography, the, the way you can move between these worlds has already been pre-constrained by what we mean by book, what we mean by app, what we mean by store and tune and all these things makes it so we can't make this be good. This, this, is, this is dumb on what's assumed to be the best product you can buy. There's this dumb thing and they can't fix it because it would require re-architecting these ecosystems, which would take a lot. Um, choreography. Uh, I like choreography also because you think of dance and a system of notation for dance. 
oftentimes information architects or whoever you are, but you need to plan a system, you can describe that dance of the way the information works with diagrams that work kind of like the way that choreography diagrams work for dance. So that's kind of, so this is again, sort of more traditional sense of, of the information architect. Uh, and this could be inside of a context or across context that we're minding the choreography. Um, there's also this sense of what is appropriate that based on those other things that we've done with what we mean and then how we've arranged meaning, certain things are more or less appropriate. For me, for Hyatt, I thought that this was highly inappropriate to be offering me uh, an upgrade opportunity that I can, for as little as $7 extra per night, I could get a premium room maybe. And I actually clicked on that because I'm curious about these things because I knew it was bad. Um, and it took me to a whole other thing. It took me out of checkout to sign me up for some sort of a rewards program. But then once I got the code, I could go back um, based on who they are and what they want to do. Is that the, is that the appropriate choreography? No. Um, this is a little bit better. Uh, this is after Ticketmaster got sued for this because uh, they just signed you up for a rewards program without your knowledge on the reward screen, sort of a pre-checked check mark. And then if you didn't uncheck it and hit the button, then you were automatically signed up for a program. Uh, so these matters of choreography, there are dark patterns to this choreography. This is a little less dark. And this was after my purchase of concert tickets. Then it's like, hey, do you want to participate in a rebate or something? Okay. That's a little bit more appropriate uh, for me as a customer, let alone for what they want to get done in selling these tickets. Um, slide share. If you download, I downloaded my own PowerPoint because I had a, a different computer, downloaded my own PowerPoint. They sent me an email. This fired off. There was a business rule. Somebody thought, you know what, the way that customers move through this product and service, uh, thank you for saving your file at any time. You can view these other, these are the other things that you saved. They saw a signal from me that made it look like I didn't know what was saved where. They're like, no, no, we got it. Want to download your other ones, dumbass? <laughs> Here they are. Uh, this was appropriate. And then when we talk about uh, responsive design, a design that actually the structure changes, that what's offered is different in one channel as opposed to a different channel. This is a quite excellent recent example of that from American movie something, AMC theaters, is that the reasons, if you just started as a designer, you're given this piece, make this be the best piece it can be, that's great. We need that work, but there is an architectural dimension to this. Uh, what would be the appropriate way to take a desktop and put it into this form factor? Wouldn't it be great if you knew about what is our particular meaning across the business? Am I closing any doors to opportunity if I open this other one? Is the way that we arrange these things across contexts going to collide? Um, so you can work on any of these things independently. Um, but wouldn't it be great if you knew how to see? So uh, Starbucks, where is the information architecture on Starbucks.com? It's all over the place. Uh, here's one about the arrangement of the parts. Have you ever been to a Starbucks without a cash register? Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Five sixths of this website does not have a cash register. That's the arrangement of the parts. Uh, the store is in a tab, it's tacked on. There's a lot of reasons for that, I'm sure. But if we want to make this be good, do you like Starbucks? What about going to Starbucks is good? Does this website know anything about the physical Starbucks? It does not know really, uh, um, Particular meaning. So once we've divvied up the world, once we've had to say, no, the shop is over here because the website has to do these other weird things too. Okay, so what are our particular meanings? Well, what about gift card? And uh, how is that different than card? Um, turns out, Gift cards are also loyalty cards at Starbucks. So our particular meaning of gift card or card, it's a munge, We're, we've done it wrong. So we have to spray and pray with gift card, card, loyalty card, because uh, it doesn't make any sense. 
And then the rules for interaction among the parts, this gets even crazier now, because, because the store isn't integrated, if you go under coffee, uh, so the other day I was given a little VIA packet in my Starbucks to promote this new Tribute Blend. If you're interested in Tribute Blend, and you go to it under menu, you go to a product page that doesn't have an add to cart button on it. If you click on this, you go to the version of the Tribute Coffee page inside of coffee because of reasons. But you can't buy it from that page. You have to go to a different page. Once you click on the return of Tribute Blend, then you see, and you read about the coffee, and then you say, buy now, and then you're over in the shop. Oh, and by the way, your loyalty card and gift card are not the same as your sh online shopping account. So you couldn't check your card balance while you were shopping. Like it's all, the information architecture here is broken. And it's just right here. Uh, another example that's kind of fun, um, why is I important? Maidenform was a client of Fry back in the day and we had them as a client and they had a seasonal refresh so this wasn't even a re-architecting thing. This was like a, we have a new season, we're loading in the new products, but hey, can you change the second button? We're no longer calling them underwear, we're calling them pants. Uh, because of reason, because, because we are. So you're the web admin, you change the button to say pants. Um, if you do a search on the site for pants, no results found for pants, even while there is a button for a category called pants. Uh, so this poor page level tactic, you know, bad IA means bad sort of page level user experience, uh, and that's bad. So you should care about information architecture because of that. But uh, what we'll get to pretty soon here is uh, the bigger sense of what you could do architecturally. Uh, what if it isn't just that we could make these little pages not so confusing, but, uh, so this is from an architect, Robert Venturi. Uh, he talks about how buildings can be loosely or tightly tied to their purpose. Uh, a duck-shaped building that sells duck eggs is highly effective. And then when the next uh, proprietor comes in selling Frisbees, what do you do? But if we had built a decorated shed and just slapped a sign on the front that said duck eggs, great. Then the Frisbee store can come in and say Frisbees. So uh, there are all these problems that we can fix with IA, but uh, the bigger, uh, the, the boss level is, well, what if we could make structures that were really architected to their purpose, and what, what does that start look like? Uh, okay. Questions? <laughs>